If you're interested in a copy of my book called The Darkness Around Us, you'll find it on online stores like Amazon. And it's a really good handbook, lots of symptoms, lots of understanding how they attach. Some people are very visual. They need to do the reading. If you're an auditory person, you might enjoy my podcast called Perfectly Paranormal. It's on all of the apps. I talk just the way I'm talking now. I'm very, people say to me, it's like I've got, it's like you're sitting next to me telling me a story in my lounge room. You know, it's very relaxed because that's how I find it makes it relatable and there's no fear. I don't create fear around the paranormal. They're not frightening. Once you understand them, it takes away all that movie stuff that we've been trained to believe, you know? Everyone, welcome back to Living the Next Chapter. I have someone joining me from a little bit far away from where I am right now. And it's a different day, it's a different time of the day. And I'm so excited to have my guest on the podcast. And uh, Anna's here with me today, Anna Schmidt. And she's an author. She's going to help you get in touch with something super in your life. And she's got a podcast, which is amazing. We're talking about that. And all about her books and everything she's doing. Anna, welcome to Living the Next Chapter. How are you? Hello, David. It's great to be here. It's very early in the morning here in Australia, but I am wide awake and ready to have a conversation with you. This is really fun for me. What I love about podcasting, Anna, is that I get a chance to talk to someone like you, who's an expert in your field, putting great stuff into the world, helping many people, and that we can cross the world through a microphone, a little camera and some earphones. We can talk and we can meet each other. This is a joy for me. So thank you for doing this. Absolutely. Look, I love it as well. I have a podcast too called Perfectly Paranormal, and I love interviewing people who have had paranormal experiences. And we get to share the message about what's out there, how it affects people. This is basically my life. Excuse me. This is basically my life and how uh, my book, The Darkness Around Us, came into fruition. Okay, there's a lot to unpack here. So I would like to kind of let's rewind a little bit and go back to the beginning of your journey with all things paranormal, all the things that you do. We we met for a brief chat in advance of our recording today, and you shared so many amazing stories, insights. You've learned a lot and you've helped a lot of people. But where did all this begin for you? Where did this this passion for what you do, where did it start? Well, I've always been psychic. Now, you'll have people out there that will roll their eyes because I I deal with a lot of sceptics. Now, when you feel, see, hear, sense the energy world around us, that is what I call psychic skills. It doesn't mean that you can instantly contact grandma on the other side. That's a specific psychic skill called mediumship. But people who sense, their bodies sense the energy world around us, their mind senses it, they have dreams about specific things, about premonitions. I've always been what I call a feeler, which I think in the technical word is clairsentience. So I feel the energy world around us. I feel people's energy. I feel the presence of paranormal beings. And no, I don't have a mental health condition. So it's not anything medical that is me having hallucinations. I don't take any medication. I've done all the debunking over the years. When you're a child and you're in bed at five, you're five years old and you're in bed and all of a sudden something or someone touches you on the shoulder or your bed light flickers and you're like, what is that? It's a brand new light globe in there. You know, I've done all the debunking over the years and I just know that there is more to the world that we live in than what we can see, hear, feel, touch, taste, smell, all these tangible things. So there is an energy world that exists at exactly the same time in exactly the same place as the physical world that we're in. So I'm all about educating people about the energy world. And everything that I share on my podcast, on my website, through my book, through my talking, which I do a lot of, it's all personal experience. 
It's all my clients' experiences, but I change people's names, obviously, for privacy. But to educate people about what is around us, they understand it when you give them a relatable experience. Exciting. Now, can you can you help define for us how people are more in tune? What type of people tend to be more in tune and what type of people tend to be more skeptical about the paranormal? I think it's got a lot to do with wanting to understand what is around us. <clears throat> Some people are curious and, you know, what, what is that touch on my shoulder? Who was that that just kind of touched my hair? And it wasn't harmful, didn't hurt me, didn't make me feel unwell or might feel a little bit scared or a little bit frightened. And you get on the internet or you talk to people or you buy a book and you want to read and you want to know and you want to understand what it is. They're the people that advance in understanding the energy world around us because they're curious. Some people will get that sort of little poke in bed or a tug on their blanket or they're, they're at a historic site somewhere in the world and they'll get that feeling of, of, oh, there's someone with me and they'll be instantly frightened by that. They're the people that shut down and don't want to know about it. It's just like it doesn't exist, I don't want to know about it. So I deal with both types of people. I've actually done lots of house clearing work through my business where I go in worldwide from my little home in Tasmania, which is a tiny little island at the bottom of Australia, with permission and a floor plan and a picture of the building. I can actually go into someone's home and give it an energetic cleansing. And I've done a lot of this for skeptics. And after they've had all these symptoms they've told me about and I've gone in and done the cleansing, the house feels better. It feels lighter. It feels brighter. Their sleep improves. The dog's not hiding under the couch all the time. The kids aren't arguing over ridiculous, stupid things that they weren't arguing over before. But the skeptics won't acknowledge the work I've done has helped but they'll go, you know what, something has changed. And to me, that's enough. If the work helps people and they're still sceptical, well, I've kind of planted the seed. Mm -hmm. Okay. So from your podcast, um, for those new listeners who are coming to your podcast for the first time, A, where would they start? That Where's a good starting point? Would we start with the most recent episode? Do we go back to the beginning? Where would you ask them to start listening? But also curious, what are some examples from your podcast of amazing stories that kind of reinforce what we just talked about? You can listen really to any episode at any stage because every episode on Perfectly Paranormal, I share relatable stories, but I also share real information. Like I relate the story to a particular topic. Now, my very first episode, and it's not as perfectly edited as my 60th episode, but it's okay. Yeah. I'm happy yeah. with it. People will get the message. I talked about an experience that some clients were having here in Hobart in Tasmania, and I also talked about my life. So episode one is probably a good starting point to get to understand who I am, why I do what I do, and why it's different to what everybody else does and why people think I'm a little bit strange and a little bit odd. But I own it because I know the work that I do helps people worldwide. I have seen the results. I've heard the results. Now, episode one was really interesting. A lady contacted me. She had a very psychic daughter and she's like, I just don't know what to do. Now, that's a whole other side story. But when I went to their home, we're sitting at the table having a chat. Now, I don't always visit people for these jobs, but sometimes local people, Australians are very sceptical. Like, we're really, we're really quite a sceptical bunch. And this lady was a bit like, mm, I just don't know. I need to meet you. So I'm like, local, that's easy. I do Zoom calls for international people that want to meet me. 
So I go to this lady's house. I get to the front door and I trip over nothing. And I'm like, okay. A lot of these paranormal beings that are in people's homes for different reasons, we'll talk about that a bit later on because I get very sidetracked. Hmm. This was a little like, don't come in here, we don't want you here. And whenever I go to people's homes or I enter a property worldwide, I always say to the paranormal beings that are present, it's okay, I'm here to have a conversation with the client. I haven't been employed to do the work yet. So I'm only visiting. Mm. You don't need to feel threatened because I've got a bit of a, a name, I think, in the dark realm as someone that goes in and cleans out houses. But I simply move the paranormal beings from one place to another. They're not hurt or harmed in any way. Very respectful work. I treat them just like people, very respectful. So I go to this lady's house. I trip over nothing at the front door and I'm like, hmm, first sign. The front door wouldn't open. Second sign. Hmm. <laughs> they can manipulate the human environment sometimes. A lady's like, oh, I don't know why the door is so stuck. And I'm like, it's okay, it's okay. And we introduced ourselves and we went and sat down at her kitchen table. We're having a chat about the daughter and her psychic abilities. And I felt something walk towards me. Now, the only way to explain that would be it feels like a physical person is walking towards you, but you can't see them. It's like a presence walking up and standing like right in your face. They don't like me, remember, because they think I'm a threat. So I'm continuing to talk to this lady and I can feel this presence here. And all of a sudden it backed off again because quite often they'll come and observe you. And the lady's looking at me like, What's going on? I said, look, I'm listening to what you're saying, but I'm also aware that you have something in your house. And she's like, yeah, it's a big something. So to cut a very mm. long story short, the daughter's bedroom was an issue. So I went and said, if I go to people's homes locally, I like to do what I call a walk around because I'm a paranormal addict, which is a whole other topic. I love the paranormal. So my body is very sensitive to it, like I mentioned earlier. So I like to do a walk around a property and I'll go, yep, I can pick up something there, something in that room. Oh, where I'm standing, you've got something that's occurred here, as in some sort of trauma imprint or a pile of emotions which create a big pool of energy that then attract these paranormal beings. Now, the energy beings that were in this home were there because of the previous owners. So whenever people move into a house, they're inheriting everything that everyone has left behind, whether it's alcoholism, domestic violence, uh, it could be mental health issues. All of these, these things create a vibration. So this energy world works on vibrations. Paranormal beings are a vibration. They're attracted to feed off their favourite vibration, which is basically the whole point of my message. So I walk into the daughter's bedroom with the permission of the mum and I just sit at the desk and I observe what's in the room. Yep, I can feel a portal up above her bed, which would cause sleep issues, which is basically an interdimensional doorway. Because she's very psychic, these beings are coming to observe her and she's getting frightened and she's yelling and screaming of a night time and keeping everybody awake. So we managed to settle that issue. Now, just take note, mum and daughter are sitting at the kitchen table, which is probably 10 to 15 metres away. I'm in the daughter's bedroom. All of a sudden, the two bedroom doors on either side of where I'm sitting slam. Now, I don't ever panic about these things. Remember, paranormal addict, I observe and I'm curious and I'm like, ooh, okay, mm. remember that. So I did my little bit of um, detective work in the bedroom for another few minutes and I came out and you should have seen the mother and the daughter. They were sitting there with their hands planted on the table. I'm sure their hands were almost glued to the table in fear. And I stood in the daughter's bedroom doorway and I went, did, did someone slam those doors? And they went, no. I said, have you got any windows open in those bedrooms? No. 
So wow. there's that slam, we don't want you here, leave now. Now, I won't be bullied. I stay calm. I stay respectful. Go back to the kitchen table and I'm talking to the mum. Now, mind you, this is over a four-hour period. So when you talk paranormal and you get into the flow, and she'll hear when I talk a lot about what I do because I am I've got this passion for it, time just time just disappears. Anyway, we thought there was one paranormal being, which I sat down and I use a pendulum as my dowsing tool because what it is, the pendulum is a focal point outside the body because in our human minds we're full of what we've got to cook for tea, all our appointments, the problems with the partner, all that human stuff that we have that clogs our brains. A pendulum or dowsing rods are a focal point outside the body that your higher vibrational support network can use as a communication tool. So I'm very in tune with my pendulum. So I had it with me. I take my tools everywhere I go because I usually need them. So I'm sitting there and I'm doing the dowsing and I'm like, yep, we've got one paranormal being. And there was a slight waver in the pendulum. And I'm like, okay, remember, observe, it was a waver. So that tells me there's something else here. There's always a lot in homes. People think they can get some sage and some crystals and just go around the house and waft all the corners and open the windows and just tell these beings to, to bugger off doesn't work. Remember, they're energetic feeders. You've got to remove all the emotional imprints, all of the trauma imprints, which are the mental health issues and so on. And then they'll go, eh, I don't want to be here. You've taken away my food source. And they simply move next door, down the road, go to the pub, go to the local swimming pool, go to parliament. I don't care where they go. As long as they leave the home that I've been employed to clear. That is the rule. They must leave that property. They're not allowed in my home. Go elsewhere. I don't care where you go. That keeps it respectful and that stops me from receiving retaliation from the dark realm because there's millions of these beings. But once you understand them, they're not frightening. They're only energy feeders. They just go into people's homes or to pubs or clubs or anywhere where there's been big pools of energy created. Won't get sidetracked. So we cleared the one being that was there and it left. I felt the shift. I felt it leave. And as I'm leaving, I tripped over at the front door again. And I said to her, "Mm." I said, look, I think I need to come back or I can do this long distance for you from my home. She messages me the next day and she said, look, it's still here. It's still here. And she said she'd got out her pendulum, which she hadn't used for years because she saw me use it. And she thought, yeah, this works. This works. I'm going to practice and I'm going to do it. And she said she kept getting in her head the number three. She kept seeing it. Everywhere she went that day, she saw three, 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 everywhere. And that's the universe giving you a sign that you need to be aware of three of something. There were three demonic beings in that home. Now, I I called them the demonic triplet sisters because how they presented themselves, when I went back to the house, because paranormal addict, I wanted to go back. And the lady was happy to have me there. We're actually really good friends now. I get to the front door, trip over again. I always, same thing. There's nothing there. There's nothing physical. Got in the house. I'm sitting there at the table and I'm like, she said, look, three, three, three. I said, yes, I think there's more than one of this particular level of energy being. Because in my book called The Darkness Around Us, I outline lots of different levels of lower vibrational beings that have come across. And these aren't spirits. Spirits are just people who've left their bodies. It's a soul energy. These are dark beings that have never been human. They've never lived in a human body but they are energy. So we're sitting there at the table. And what I saw walk towards me was a pair of very long legs in fishnet (laughs) stockings and like 10 inch stilettos. And I'm like, okay, this is another form of threat. There was a strut to the way this energy being was walking. It was like, Mm -hmm. we don't want you here. Leave. 
I'm like, no, nah, I'm not going anywhere. I won't be bullied by the living or the non-living. So anyway, I managed to clear those beings and I worked on some other areas in the home where there were build-ups of these emotional imprints. So that's the very first story that I share with people. And wow. the thing is to be aware that there's not always one of these beings. They always travel in groups. That's what I tell people. And that tends to frighten people. But I'm like, I'm not trying to frighten you. My podcast, Perfectly Paranormal, is all about educating people. There's no jump scares. There's no language that's going to frighten you. Yes, I do dramatise slightly, otherwise it would be really, really boring, but it's all about education and people go, you know what, I get it because you explain it in such a a rational, relatable way. I'm like, yeah, I can understand why when I went to the pub the other night, no one would sit in that cubicle, but yet no Mm. one could work out why no one would sit in that cubicle. And I went, yeah, look, something's probably happened there. There might have been an altercation, some sort of physical violence or, or an argument or someone has been really ruminating about how much they hate someone else. All that creates an imprint. So mm-hmm. my my basic life mission is to educate people about be aware of what you think. It's all about the, the thoughts, the words, the actions, and the reactions. Mm-hmm. Everything you do creates an imprint. And all the lower vibrational ones sink into where you're sitting, you create that imprint, where you're standing, on the loo, in your bed, in your favourite chair in the lounge room, wherever you sit or lie or stand and create all those negative thoughts, that's where you leave a puddle. These puddles of energy attract energy beings that like that particular vibration. Once you clear the vibration, they're gone. They're not going to stay. They're going to go down the road where that vibration is just vibing away and they want to go and have a good time. So when I wrote The Darkness Around Us, it was a bit of a challenge because I never thought of myself as an author. You know, I thought, oh, no, I haven't been to uni. I haven't had any creative writing training. I don't know how to write a book. But I kept getting told, you need to educate people about this. So management is my higher vibrational support network. It's just one word. It's easier just to call them that. And I kept getting the living people going, I want to know more about this. You need to write a book. You need to write a book. You need to write a book. And I went, oh, being told (laughs) I have to write a book. I bet you get lots of people tell you that. Yes, a lot. Exactly. Yeah, you just get told you need to write a book. So I sat down and I went, okay, okay. How am I going to explain this to people? Because I'm a natural storyteller. I just I just tell the stories, you know, and they're real experiences and they're not designed to frighten people. It's all about educating people. So when I wrote the book, The Darkness Around Us, it's a paranormal guide to understanding darkness so you live in the light. So when you understand how these beings work, then you don't attract them. You just don't. So in the book I talk about the levels of lower vibrational beings that I've come across. Now, there may be many others, but I've been psychic for 55 years. I'm 56 this year. So I've had a lot to do with lots of different types of paranormal beings in my life, in my experiences, but also through my clients' experiences. So Chapter 1 is all about understanding some levels of these beings. Now, I talk a lot about two levels, just to make it easy for people. Your dark beings, which are your mischievous, naughty ones, and then your demonic level beings. Now, they're not what you see in the movies. When I say the word demonic, people's eyes get so wide, it's like they're going to (laughs) burst. Don't worry about it. It's a different level of density of energy. It's like how I can explain it is the steam on your kettle is really light and sort of sort of fluffy. If you're walking through a pea soup fog, you know, or a really Good, thick yeah. smoke cloud and it's yeah. really dense and heavy to walk through, that's that sort of relatable way to look at two different levels of these energy beings. There's all sorts of different other ones that I outline in the book. But when I'm explaining it to people, I just use the light and the heavier ones, especially in people's homes. So chapter one is all about understanding the different types of beings. Chapter two is about the symptoms. So I've been doing this work Mm. a long time. 
So I've experienced lots of physical symptoms, lots of energetic symptoms, lots of sleep issues, lots of changes in behaviours, um, eating patterns, sleeping patterns, behavioural patterns, arguing patterns, thinking patterns, because each of these beings affect us in a different way. And depending on the person, each individual person's level of vulnerability, if you've got a mental health issue and you attract, say, a demonic level being, they're not going to make you do anything. People say, oh, the devil made me do it. I'm going, no, these paranormal beings enhance what is already there. So if you've got an underlying condition you don't know about, they can come in and they can poke you in a certain way because what they want is they want you to create their food source. So once you understand how they work, then you just don't create that food for them anymore. So I have a whole chapter on symptoms. Chapter three is all about the attachment methods, how they are present around us. So I talk a little bit about the home, but the darkness around us is more about your personal interaction with these beings. So they can be within our energy field. They can be present in our chakras, in our meridian lines, which are basically the energy system within our physical body. There's a Chinese medical system which talk about the meridian lines, which are energy lines that run all through the body. The chakras are really well known by many, many, many people. I work with two below the feet, seven in the body, and two above the body when I'm clearing people of paranormal attachments. So there's lots of different ways they can use the physical body. They can also portal around our energy field. Or if you're someone who's very spiritual and you're very open and you're not using protection, they can portal into your crown chakra or your brow chakra because they're the energy centers that connect to the universe, you know, your spirit guides, your angels, all that sort of thing. Number four, chapter four, I talk about the some simple methods that people can use to move spirits out of their home or to move spirits away from them. I don't really talk about the type of work I do or give my methods because once these beings see you and get to know that you're an energy worker, they're everywhere. People go, oh, no, I just went to a haunted location. You know, all the spirits hang out at night time. I'm going, no, I'm sorry. I'm just going to just stop you right there. <laughs> spirits and lower vibrational beings are around us all the time, day, night, morning, afternoon, and night. It's just an energy world that is existing in exactly the same time frame and the same places where we are. So once you understand that and you go, oh, yeah, that tripping over that thing at the front door, there's nothing there, nothing physical I could trip over. And I'm like, mm, something energetic is there. So mm -hmm. chapter four, I give a few methods. Chapter five, I talk about one of my favourite topics, which is paranormal addiction. Now, I'm not a doctor. I'm not a mental health professional. I have no medical qualifications to talk about paranormal addiction, but I've experienced it. I live it. I've talked to lots of paranormal addicts through my clients and there's specific signs and symptoms of someone who has a paranormal addiction. There's lots of different things that show up with them. Repeating the same message when they go from the, you know, I'll use the word healer, but I don't really like that word because people don't heal other people. They assist them to change and transition. That's why I call myself an energy clearer. I don't heal people when I do personal energy clearings or clear their home. I simply go in and do an energetic spring clean. People who have paranormal addiction, lots of different levels. So level one's like curiosity. It's like, yeah, I don't know, what happens when you die? You know, where am I going to go? Well, I see granddad. That's normal. Everybody has that curiosity. Level two is when you start doing the paranormal tours and you just want to know more. It's still at a very innocent level. It's curious. You know, I want to experience that tug on my jacket or I want to experience, prove to me that you are here, you know, and when you put that message out there, oh, my God, you can attract all sorts of things. So you've got to be really careful with your words. 
I went out on a paranormal investigation one night. I worked as a tour guide, paranormal tour guide for a short period of time. And one man actually said in this very old mental health institution that we were doing tours in, it's not operational now, it's been abandoned for like 25 years. He said, if there's any demons, please come and possess me now. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay. And I, I was horrified because possession is real. It's not something I talk about a lot in the book because I don't want to frighten people. But it's just you attract a certain level, like the, the real pea soup type paranormal beings, the real heavy ones that come in and they affect your thinking. You get brain fog. You can't understand why you're doing certain things. Why am I arguing the wife? Why am I kicking the dog? There's all these things that go on where these beings are manipulating you. Now, that can be moved out. It's the same way I do homes. It's the way I work with people. You go in and do all the detective work. It can take up to 25 to 40 hours to do all this clearing work. But it's fascinating. So paranormal addiction is really interesting. A lot of people are lonely and they're looking for attention and they know that if they talk to a healer, they're going to get their attention and they go from one person to the next one to the next one to the next one. I can tell certain levels of paranormal addiction by the way people write their emails. Yes, it's a certain depth of language that they use. They know all the terminology and, you know, the average person that's got something in their house will message me and go, look, I'm not sleeping. I can give a really great example after about a daughter, a four-year-old that was seeing something in the house and found a way to let the parents know, very sceptical parents, but I did the work and it improved the situation. But at four years old, she's not a paranormal addict. She's just a little child that is aware, very psychically open and aware that there was something in the house that mummy and daddy couldn't see. But because she's four, she didn't quite have the language to explain it. There's a lady um, up your end of the world in Canada who went from, I know of three, because I was the third person that received this lady. And the other two went, look, we can't seem to help her. We just can't seem to move this problem. And I called this story in one of my podcasts. I think she's in the one of the paranormal addiction ones because I did two episodes on paranormal addiction. I think I called her story the demon in the blanket because that was her catchphrase to get people's attention. So I was aware when I spoke to this lady, okay, this may be a thing. Items attract energy as well, as we talked about earlier. And the big build-ups can attract paranormal beings. So, yeah, there may be a demon in her blanket. I get it. I worked with this lady for a month. Now, I only charged her once, which is my standard fee that I charge to do this work. She kept coming back. Emails kept coming back and coming back and coming back. And I'm like, ah, you've got a paranormal addict here because she was getting attention. And I talked to her about, and it was actually a mental health in. It was a mental health issue for this lady as well, which is what the other two house clearers thought it might be as well. Mm -hmm. But we never yeah. judge people. They have different processes to me, and maybe she just needed somebody else's process to help her. Well, I did so much detective work. Three times a week for hours, for a month, I worked with this lady. And then I had to put a stop to it and go, because I talked to her a lot about are you lonely? Do you have interactions with people? It wasn't during COVID. It was after that. And it was just, she was an older lady, no partner, just her and the dog. And I think that she was really just wanted to reach out and talk to people. And the email that she sent me, I sent a copy of it to one of the previous house healers. And I went, look, did you see a similar email? And it was literally cut and paste. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Cut and paste, cut and paste. So you can see a you can see a thing here where there is someone who is desperate for attention, lonely, needs company. So I had to direct her in the end towards seeing a mental health professional because I cleared and cleared and cleared everything for her. She sent pictures of a stove, her air conditioner. She had all her clothes in boxes in the garage. There were signs of mental health. Now, I'm not a doctor, like I said, I, I'm, but I can pick up this is not paranormal. It would have been to a degree, but I knew her house was clean. I did a clearing for her personally. I knew she was energetically clean through my process that I use. So it had to be a mental health condition. And 
I literally had to stop answering her emails because they just continued and continued and continued. Now, I'm not being harsh. I actually gave her some information about getting out, socialising, you know, taking up a hobby, taking a dog for a walk, going swimming, giving her all those positive things that she could do in her life to fill her life with joy. But she was so stuck in the rut of the demons in my blanket She ended up getting to the stage where she moved her $2,000 mattress out onto the front lawn because it had a demon in it, and she was sleeping on a yoga mat in her bedroom. Wow. That's mental health. Yeah. That is a mental health condition. I can't help with that. So I said, please see a mental health. Have you got family that can help you with this situation? Nope. She just kept with the emails, email after email after email. So as soon as I stopped answering the emails, she would have got online, found someone new to talk to. It's her process, whatever it is with her life path, this is what she needs to go through. But that's just one of the examples of the types of people that I get. So paranormal addiction was really important for me to write that chapter in the book. So when you get into the darker levels, you're heading towards that satanic level of paranormal addiction, where you want to connect with a devil. You want to invoke demons to either help you or to go out and hurt someone that has, you know, you think they've done wrong by you. So I talk about four different levels of paranormal addiction. And the last chapter, it's only a very small chapter because there's not a lot of information about this. It's about where these beings go once I remove them. So yes, Yeah, yes, they go back out in the environment. What if they don't want to do that? What if they've had enough of this existence? Because some of these beings have been here for eons, which is I can't even tell you how long that is. So I get them sometimes. They will stay. They'll just hang around me. They're like, I don't want to go back out there. And I'll know that because I feel like I've got a bunch of groupies hanging around me. And I'll use my dowsing and I'll go, Okay, do we have any paranormal beings present? Yes. Dark? No. Demonic? Yes. Okay, have you come from the job I did recently? And I'll get my yes. So it's always a yes or no answer with your dowsing. So I'm very good at getting down to the core issue really quickly. So management in the afterlife waiting room, if you want to look at it as a room where we all go. So you leave your physical body, you go to this waiting room, you wait to be assigned your next post. Are you going to be fully reincarnated now? Like, bam, back in a body. Do you need to do some work? So I see it as a doctor's waiting room with all these doors on the left and the right. Well, the first door on the right when you go into this waiting room is what I call the healing space, which is where all levels of dark energy can go to work on raising their vibration. So that concept kind of freaks people out. Oh, but they're devils, they're demons, God won't accept them. God's not accepting them. They're choosing through free will, because everything has free will. They're choosing, I don't want to be here doing what I've been doing forever. I want to improve. And they found someone that can help them go. So now, my since I wrote this book a couple of years ago, I'm actually dealing with black magic. I don't want to deal with black magic, but it's come into my life for a particular reason. So I'm dealing with what I call curse entities and sorcery beings, which are different levels of, and I don't know all the black magic stuff. It's not my thing. I'm not going there. But I have to define names for these beings. So when I talk to them, I've got the different levels. They don't go to the healing space. They want to go to what I call their forever place. So they want to leave being in service. The general beings that we have in our environment, the dark and the demonic beings, they're what I call freelancers. They're just doing their own thing. You've got hatred in your kitchen. I'm just going to go and hang out there until someone comes along and clears me and then I'll move on to the next house with hatred in it. They're freelancers. They're just doing what they want to do. The in-service beings, which are energy beings that are invoked through human intention, Now, there's lots of different denominations of magic. They can each create their own or summon or invoke, whatever word they use, different levels and layers of these dark beings. So I've had to learn 
Oh my gosh, mm. I've had a steep learning curve in the last 18 months about dealing with those beings. But I have really good practices now that I can use to help them leave being in service because some of them have been trapped into being in service. It's just like living people who are trapped into slavery or people who are they're lied to about, oh, you know, you'd pay $5,000, you can go to this country, we'll find you a husband. And when the women get there, they're trapped into the slave trade or the, the sex yeah. trade. Yeah. Same sort of thing. These beings have been trapped. And through free will again, they're sent to me or I, they come to me through a client who's had a curse put on them or something like that. And they're like, we don't want to do this anymore. So I'm like, right, I've got this process now where I can help them move on. So this work is it's going to sound weird and wacky to some people, but I live it every single day and I know it is real. Wow. So the between the book, the podcast, and working with you as a client, you have like almost everything covered as far as helping people gain the knowledge, gain some freedom as well, yep. which is amazing. Um, tell me more, Anna, just about what it's like to work with you. Like if I'm a new client reaching out to you through your website, yep. connecting with you for the first time, what kind of things do I need to be prepared to give to you to make, to make this work? Okay. What's my, what's my level of involvement in the very beginning stages of talking with you? Okay. So my website is called spiritualbeing.com.au. Now it's spiritual, then the B-E hyphen I-N-G. Dot com dot au. So if you go onto my website and you go to the house and personal clearing services page, I've had all the information written there. So some people don't want to talk to you. They want to read first. They want to get used to the reading. Others are like, nope, let's organize a Zoom call. So on my website, I have a contact page. People can email me. We can organize a Zoom call or a call through some other sort of social media platform. Or if they're local in Australia, we just do a phone call. Or if some people don't want to see you. They don't want you seeing them. We just do email. So I'm open to all forms of communication. So what people need to share with me for a personal clearing, this is a clearing of their own personal energy, is a face selfie. So I'm very visual. Now, a lot of people, when they do energy work, they'll have you lay on a table for an hour and they'll do their Reiki and you get up, shake hands, away you go. The level of work that I do can take anywhere from six hours up to 25 hours and you do not want to be lying on a table that long. No. <laughs> so through the face selfie, I'm very visual. I like to talk to your face as I'm doing the work. I look in your eyes, usually the right eye. Don't ask me why. It's just my thing is that I will look at your right eye and talk to your higher self and ask permission to create a connection to do an energetic clearing. And then all the paranormal beings are moved out, all the emotional imprints, trauma imprints, any portals. Sometimes addictions will be identified to be removed. Sometimes it's black magic and so forth. Sometimes there's a recreational drug, a bit of the marijuana going on. That's attracted okay. some paranormal beings. I've worked with a lot of people with drug issues. And once they're aware that marijuana or other recreational drugs attract paranormal beings, they stop taking them instantly. <laughs> <laughs> I love wow. it. But then there's homework with a client. Now, some people think that energy clearing is a fix-all. They can do whatever they want in their life, go and see an energy clearer, oh, you'll fix me. And I'm like, nope, don't work that way. So I'm very upfront and honest with people. This is what I can do through looking at your photo. I can tune in and clear all those things that are present now that may go right back to childhood and sometimes into past lives. I had one lady who had migraines that were so bad. I worked with her for quite a long time. She'd had a past life issue where she'd been some sort of warrior and she'd had a head injury. So if you think about mind-splitting headaches, that was the words that she used, mind-splitting mm -hmm. headaches. She'd had this head injury. Once I identified that, did some clearing work around it, no more migraines. So it's wow. detailed work. Now, for most people, actually for everyone, 
We all create negative emotions. Now, I use me as an example. I create resentment. Someone annoys me, in my head, I'm going to get resentful towards them. Resentment is a vibration. When I create enough of it, I start to feel a bit like brain fog. I feel a bit wonky. I feel a bit unsteady. I'm like, oh, I got really resentful about that person. Mm. When you're aware of what your triggers are, then you don't create them as much. You therefore do not attract these paranormal beings. Now, with my clearings, like I said, I need the photo. I just need your first name and your last name. And people go, oh, why do you need the name and a photo? Well, my name's Anna Schmidt. There's about 3,000 Anna Schmidts in the world. And if I just tune Mm -hmm. into your name, how do I know that I'm getting you? So the photo is a confirmation this Anna Schmidt is the person that I'm going to be clearing, not the 2,999 others that are wafting around the world at any one time. So just the photo and the name. And there, the photo is deleted once the work is finished. Now, I write a very detailed report. As you can probably tell, I'm very OCD. The paranormal addiction and my OCD, I write all the detail. Now, sometimes people don't like what I find. I had one psychic lady. I never create hatred. Never, never, never create hatred. My mum taught me that hatred is bad. And I don't judge people with what I find, whether they're sex issues, drug issues, whatever. They're coming to me or other energy clearers because they want that stuff removed. I identify it for them, which can be a bit of a slap in the face for some people because it challenges their ego. But I'm saying to them, your higher self, when I tune into a person, I ask the permission of their higher self, you know, to enter, do the clearing. Your higher self is identifying that you need to be aware of this. And Mm. it's what the person does with it afterwards. Because I've done that spring clean for them, are they then going to go, oh, yeah, I create hatred. I do. I'm going to own that. And next time something triggers you that used to create hatred, you go, hang on. No, I'm not going to create hatred. So I don't do the resentment thing anymore. I'm like really relaxed now. I'm like, no, nah, that's that person's opinion. That's that person's, that's fine. You know, I have my own opinions. So I've worked on, done some self-talk with myself. Some people need sure. the help of a mental health professional, which is fine. You need a counsellor, talk about your problems. So there's always homework with this. It's not do whatever you want in life and then get someone to fix it for you. No, 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 it doesn't work that way. Mm. The report identifies the emotions, whether you created it or absorbed these emotions. Because some people are very sponge-like. I used to be one of these people. I used to absorb everybody's unworthy and resentment and and, it was just I couldn't go anywhere, but now I've got that sorted. Is that once you understand what you create, it's about self-awareness. So this whole process of doing clearings for people helps them understand who they are, why they create certain things. Do they want to move on from it? You know, do they like being like that? I don't judge people. I simply do the clearing that I'm employed to do and then I educate them about, if you want to move away from this, here's some processes that you can use to help you raise your vibration, raise the vibration. The paranormal beings aren't interested. They're like, no, I'm going down the road. That man's got what I want. They'll just go and find another host. It's a pretty simple yeah. method. Wow. Okay. <laughs> there is so much here. And what, again, let's go back. The fact that you have a podcast and the book and the website, there's so many ways for people to, again, if they're a little bit hesitant and they want to do their research with you, there's they can listen to your podcast. They can hear yep. the stories. They can connect with you. And they can get to feel like what's it like to listen and be in your world and, and have you kind of teach and instruct them before they even hit the send on an email. They yeah, can have that it. relationship built, right? That's it. And I do the obligation free sort of Zoom call or phone chat. I never tie people into, oh, you must pay me, and then we'll have the conversation. We talk about it first. Sometimes it needs to sink in. People need to go, okay, I've seen my doctor. So this is the other thing I didn't mention earlier. People, when I do personal clearings, I always say to them, See your doctor first. Might be a physical issue. See a mental health professional. It might be a mental health issue. 
Energetic work for me as an energy worker is always third on the list. If I get a client come to me that I think has a mental health issue, I learnt through the demon in the blanket lady. See, I'm learning as well as I do this. I would have picked up earlier with her and gone, look, do you know what? I can do this work for you. I can charge you for this, but I really think it's a mental health issue. Please go and get some help first. Then if it's not solved, you know where I am. It's not about the money. It's not about taking people's money for things that aren't paranormal. Because sometimes it's medical. You've got blood issues or or your diet's not right. You've got nutritional issues or something, or it could be a mental health issue. So energy for me is always third on the list. Perfect. I love it. Anna, tell us again about the website, the podcast, and all that good information so that we can come and support you and, and get help sure. as well. Where do we go? Where do we go? Sure. If you're interested in a copy of my book called The Darkness Around Us, you'll find it on online stores like Amazon. And it's a really good handbook, lots of symptoms, lots of understanding how they attach. Some people are very visual. They need to do the reading. If you're an auditory person, you might enjoy my podcast called Perfectly Paranormal. It's on all of the apps. I talk just the way I'm talking now. I'm very, people say to me, it's like I've got, it's like you're sitting next to me telling me a story <laughs> in my lounge room. You know, it's very it's relaxed because that's how I find it makes it relatable and there's no fear. I don't create fear around the paranormal. They're not frightening. Once you understand them, it takes away all that movie stuff that we've been trained yeah. to believe, you know? Right. So my pod, my, my website is spiritualbeing.com.au and it's B E hyphen I N G. And on the website, I have a services page which talks about all the different aspects of house clearing. I have a personal page, talks about personal clearings, even pets. I've worked on people's pets, cars, and caravans. Because remember, really? energy yeah. sits in places wherever you ruminate. If you if you're driving to work and you really hate your boss, you might have hatred building up in your car and you wonder why, you know, the battery goes flat or all these different things happen sometimes. Sometimes it's not mechanical, sometimes it's energetic. And on my website, there is also, I have a multiplayer for the podcast and I also have a blog page where they can listen to the trans or they can read the transcripts while they're sort of listening to the, the podcast. So I've got it all covered. Perfect. Um, again, it is the jo for me as a podcaster, it's a joy to have people like you on the show to connect you with and further your audience, grow it. There's people listening to this entire thing on the edge of their chair going, I can't believe I finally found the book I need and the podcast I need. There's skeptics listening going, Dave, I don't know about this. But again, there's a podcast, there's a book for you to listen to and read. And maybe this is something that could definitely help you in your in your journey. So I know in talking to Anna that Anna is a sweetheart. She cares about people and that's her mission in life. And everything you've done and all the conversations we've had, that's how you've treated me with great respect. You have treated the audience with great respect. And that's what I love about talking to you, Anna. So the fact that you have this time this time to spend with us and to share your stories. They're captivating. I know we could podcast for a week straight and still not cover every story. So uh, the fact that you've had time to do this is so great. And thank you for joining me from the other side of the world. I love podcasting for this experience right now. You're welcome, David. It's been an absolute pleasure speaking with you. You are a sweetheart as well. I really enjoy our conversations. Amazing, everyone. So all the information is in the show notes. Please go over and check out Anna's podcast. Check out the book. You know, listening to this, you're like, I know someone who needs Anna's help. Please reach out and have that conversation. Anna is a wonderful person to talk to, and I'm sure she can help you in many, many ways, far beyond what you can even think or imagine. Anna's there to help you. So Anna, thank you again so much for doing this. You're welcome, David. <laughs> Hey, hey, well, thank you for listening. It's a new year. 
and we're excited to be releasing even more great episodes of Living the Next Chapter. And we want you to come along for the journey. Thank you for being here. If you know of an author that you would love to have featured on the podcast, an author that you enjoy, an author that brings you that excitement that you would just love to hear them interviewed on this podcast, I would love to hear your suggestion for a future guest. And some what would be a question or two that you would want us to ask them on your behalf? Go to livinginthenextchapter.com. There's a little speak pipe icon there. You can leave me a voice message. Tell me who should be on the show and give me some question ideas. And I'll use your request and reach out to that author and invite them on and give you full credit for the idea. Livingthenextchapter.com. Would love to hear your suggestion. And thank you for listening. Catch you on the next episode.